In this video, I will detail the steps required to create a Highlighter Pro effect. After opening Highlighter Pro, the first thing we will do is import a background image. I created this image in Photoshop with the intention of accenting it with Highlighter Pro. This image is used as the guideline for drawing the glyph creation paths. These paths are the fundamental things which tell Highlighter Pro how to construct your effect. Now that we have a background loaded, I'm going to go ahead and draw a path. Notice that the precise placement of the dots which define the path is not important. They can be rather crudely placed, but if you should have a dot which is way off course, just right click your mouse over the dot and move it where you want it. So now we have one path over our image. To see what our effect would look like at this point, press the test effect button. As you can see, we're heading in the right direction here, but we're not quite there yet. I think we need to create more stars and cover more of the text. To do that, I'll just draw a few more paths. To add a new path, simply press the New Path button on the right side of the workspace. Notice that the original path turned green. In Highlighter Pro, the active path is always red. So now I'm ready to add a new path. I'll just again click right along the side of the old path, maybe just a little bit displaced in the Y direction to cover a little bit more of the text. I'll go ahead and add a couple of more paths here to get what I think will bring us to our final effect, or close to it. Um, we'll put about four paths on something like this so that the uh, stars, when they are generated, will cover the bulk of the text. Now, once we've got that done, those four paths, again, we test the effect button to see what it all looks like. As you can see, we're getting a little closer. Most of the text is being covered up, but I'm still not quite where I want to be. Now that our paths are drawn, we can focus our attention on setting the parameters which will give us the effect we're looking for. These parameters for each of the paths is controlled on the right side of the workspace. The first thing I'd notice is that the path duration is probably too long. You can see it's set for three seconds. That means that it would take the star sweep a full three seconds to reveal the letters below it. Uh, for uh, a better effect, I think if we set this to something like about one and a half seconds or so, that would make the sweep be faster and more appealing. You'll notice that we have four paths in our, our project at the moment, and the current path is number four. Uh, that means when I made this change here for the path duration to one and a half seconds, it's applying only to path four. If I wanted to apply to all the paths, I simply click the All Path button adjacent to the parameter that I'm changing in this case the path duration. So now I've changed all of the paths to be one and a half seconds in duration. The other thing that I'd like to do is to make the, the uh, stars fly out further than what they're doing. Right now the glyph flyout distance is set at 50. Uh, that keeps them tightly bunched uh, and is okay for certain effects. But what I'm trying to do here is make a more global change or a global effect that covers the entire uh, workspace so that you're going to see when you put it in your project. So what I'm going to do is change this 50 to a number like about 300 or so. I picked 300 since the top to bottom of the uh, what's going to be the ultimate AVI output is 480 pixels. So 300 starting from here will fly them completely off the top and completely off the bottom. So the other thing I'd like to do is give the stars a little more duration. They're vanishing uh, pretty quickly now at two seconds so that 
you know, we, we really don't get to see the impact of them very well. So if we give them a number, something like about four, and for both of these, we're going to apply it to all paths. you got to remember to do that because it will only apply to the uh, current path if, unless you click all paths. But having done that now, I think we're going to have what could turn out to be a pretty interesting effect. To test how our effect looks to this point, we simply again press the test effect button to see what's going on. Not bad. It's getting there. I think perhaps we might uh, want to change a few things. Uh, perhaps you'll notice all the stars are the same size. So one thing that might be nice to do is add a little variation there. To incorporate the star size variation, I'll return to the parameter settings section of our workspace. You'll notice that we now have a four point star large glyph assigned to all the paths. I'll cycle through the paths here so you can see that for all the paths, it actually is a four point star large. We just happen to have included all the, also a four point star medium, which is a bit smaller glyph. And I'm going to assign that to path number one, and I think I'll go up here and also assign that to path number three. In addition, I'm going to move down here to another segment of our workspace, and you'll see now here that we have a checkbox called Double Density. What I'd like to do is just to check that box and assign it to all paths. You can probably guess that Double Density simply means that we're going to be generating twice the number of stars that we had been. And I think this will help a bit when we look at the uh, look at the impact that it has in terms of obscuring the text as it's formed. I'll move back to our test rectangle now, and we can do a quick test of this effect and see what we have. And there, that works pretty well. The uh, star field is very dense where it's where it's creating the stars, which will hide the uh, text as it as it appears on our sweep that we're going to do later in our AV editor. And we have now a nice dispersion of stars, some large and some small. And I think what we'll do is we'll just take this effect right now and we'll move on to building an AVI. Before I make the uh, final AVI of this effect though, I'm going to do one additional thing. And that is I'm going to remove the text background that we've used as a guide for laying down our paths. I do that simply by uh, clicking on the solid color black background and um, as you can see that'll take the text out of the picture. The reason I did this is I want to be able to use this effect over and over again. That is I'm going to make it a mask that can be used in the AV editor. If the text was there it'd be a one-time deal uh, because every time you played it it would have that text still uh, over or underlaying the uh, star field. So what I've done here is uh, remove it and now we're going to go down and uh, do the final uh, tasks that are needed to make this effect work. You'll see we have to we have to build the bitmaps first and to do that simply by pressing the build bitmap button and you'll see that what happens is the star field will start to to uh, play the uh, main sweep there of the stars going across what had been the text but is now blank. Um, this total effect is 5.5 seconds so it'll only build uh, oh, 165 or so bitmaps um, at 30 frames a second and uh, that would then um, be the uh, the bitmaps input to building the AVI. Once we've got the bitmaps built we then simply press the build AVI. I'll give this uh, a name of uh, uh, let's call it uh, star sweep example and we'll save that AVI. You can see right now that it tells you that it's writing the file and when it's finished it will erase all the bitmaps that were created and then delete them and uh, tell you that the AVI build is complete. Uh, and that about wraps up how you'd go about making this effect in uh, Highlighter Pro. Um, now I'll move on to where we use it in an AV editor.